Kabecha wanted us to look at Sun International. Uh, so, what, I mean, I was quite an um, interesting question here, Kabecha, because, you know, it's still so negative. The news around it is so negative. But they are starting, I mean, last week the share was up 75%. Again, a little bit of our Rami candle this week. And now the big test is, when will I see a turnaround pattern? And what, what makes me a little bit nervous, and I think that might be, uh, uh, I just want to count here, two, three. That might be a better line there. Um, there you go, four, five touching points. The big test now is, will the share be able to change this diagonal line into a support? All right. Because, and, and the other question is, to take a look how closely that is to this horizontal line, waiting there around 18 Rand and 11 cent. And what makes me a little bit nervous about this share, um, Kabeto, is the fact that every time it looks like, yay, it's a turnaround story, yay, it's a turnaround story, yay, it's a turnaround story, and it just doesn't turn around. It continues to decline, and, and that is what makes me a little bit nervous about this turnaround pattern. So I would maybe wait for higher lows. In other words, a, 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 a rise in the share pack, a share, a pullback, find support and a rise again. And wherever that support is, that support should be higher than the previous support of the share. And if that starts to happen and these previous resistances starts to change into a support, that will be an indication for you that there are buyers with the informed capital, the big pockets, that are accumulating this share in the dips. And that is normally a good indication. So, but if you want to preempt it, Kabeto, and you maybe have a long-term view, above 18 Rand 11, this share would be a buy. Stop loss, if you want to use, will be 7 Rand 62. And then I could not find any window on a weekly graph, but I think an easy target would be this 40-week moving average because, and that is waiting at 31 Rand 24. And you will see, uh, again, Every time the 40-week moving average, when they could not find enough buyers to lift it through it, the share started to retrace. But I think that is a nice target that one can aim for. But below that 7 Rand 64 level on Sun International, I would be concerned about the graph. Newton wanted us to look at Sigma Labs. It's a, it's a company listed in the US, uh, listed on the NASDAQ to be precise. And uh, new Tom, I can see why, you, why you've chosen this or, or selected this share. Because when I looked at it, I thought, mm, maybe a headed shoulder formation here, nice consolidation band, the share is oversold. But then my next question is, do I have a spike in volume? And guess what? There was a spike in volume. Now, this might be seen as a possible, and I would have liked the consolidation base to be a little bit longer. Because this consolidation base is, my, uh, I mean, three months old. That's not long enough. But there is a, a trading model from the book, um, How I Made $2 Million um, on the U.S. Stock Exchange by Nicolas Darvas that was a dancer. And his model was exactly this, a long consolidation base with a spike in volume. And when the share starts to rise, um, along with that spike in volume, it tells us or it implies that the sellers have dried up and that the buyers are keen to accumulate the stock for higher levels. So, Newton, I think you've got something here. Unfortunately, the confirmation of optimism would only be there above $3.85 US cents, but the share will warn again below $2. But I think the graph looks good. There's a spike in volume. Although nothing has happened for the last three months, I think there is some nice upside there. Below this $2 levels, I would be concerned about, about this like distorted head and shoulder formation. But the spike in volume gives me a little bit of hope because the share continued sideways despite the spike in volume. And that gives me a little bit of hope. And obviously, first target will be the 40-week moving average waiting at $6.31 as a possible target for the share. And of course, it's nicely oversold. My stochastic indicator that I've used here to highlight overbought or oversold levels is sitting below a 20. And that is a good indication of a possible, you know, opportunity to accumulate this share. Roger wanted us to look at NASPERS, and he said there, Christelle, I'm, I'm possibly seeing a head and shoulder formation. Do you agree? And Roger, if I go back to a daily graph, I can see exactly, I, I, I agree with you. There is a head and shoulder formation on NASPERS. And it's clear, I mean, let me draw that in for our viewers. It's the beautiful left shoulder, massive head, 
and then my right shoulder. And Roger, take note. Look how closely the shear is consolidating to that 40-week moving average, the red line. It tells us that the buyers and sellers are fighting that support or resistance and to see whether there are enough buyers to lift it again and possibly close this window that is waiting on NASPERS at 3,100 Rand. Now, if the share starts to continue to lose momentum and this neckline at around 2,780 Rand changes into a resistance, that negative, that warning pattern of the head and shoulder formation will be confirmed. Now, what is the target of a head and shoulder formation? If I take the conservative left shoulder and I, the length of the left shoulder projected downwards, from the neckline where the formation will be confirmed. It means this head and shoulder can take um, NASPERS to 2,607 Rand and the full target of my formation is the length of the head projected downwards from where the neckline confirmed the pattern, which means I can possibly see it at 2,340 Rand. Now, we are talking about NASPERS here and we know it's one of the darlings of the market. When will the negativity about NASPERS be wiped off the table? When the shares start to consolidate above my left shoulder, because that's the highest shoulder of the two. If the share starts to consolidate above 2,988 Rand and 98 cents, the, the negativity around this formation becomes obsolete and I can con assume, assume then that the momentum to the top can continue and that they possibly will close this window. And of course, when this um, high of 3,200, let me give you the exact level, 3,277 Rand and 70 cents, when that level starts to change into a support, I can assume that the share might reach for new record highs. Keep in mind, Roger, there are a lot of um, windows here on NASPERS that can act as possible targets for downside. But I think for long-term investors, and if we go back to the weekly graph, <laughs> that was a 40-day moving average. Excuse me, Roger, because I was looking at a daily graph. So the 40-week moving average um, is 2,476 2, Rand and 73 cents. If the share starts to change that level into a resistance, um, the long-term sentiment towards the share changed to, to negative. Remember, if we look at weekly graphs, we look at 40-week moving averages. If we look at daily graphs, we look at 200-day moving averages for long-term investors. And why is that? If you take 200 days and you divide it by the five working days in a week, it gives you 40. That's why your moving average will change to 40. So ignore my previous statement about the 40 day, which was a 40 day on a daily graph. Having said that, there is also on a weekly graph, a tweezer top on NASPERS. And that top was confirmed when the shares started to consolidate below 3,020 Rand and 25 cents. So now the big test is, will the support that is waiting there at around 2,787 Rand, will it hold? or will it change into a resistance? And if it does, and this massive bearish engulfing candle that was 8.94% long, if that level starts to change into resistance, we can see even lower levels on NASPERS. Robert wanted us to look at Uber. One of the shares again listed on the New York Stock Exchange, and we can see every time the share bounced, um, Robert, that it started to make lower highs because this high year, is a lot higher than this high year, which is higher than this bounce year. And that tells me loss of momentum, lower highs are visible, and that we might see downside first. When will the um, weakness in Uber be confirmed? When it starts to consolidate below $34.83 US cents. Below that level, we can maybe see a pullback even further, back to the 40-week moving average at $31.44. And the share is overbought. So if you don't own it already, I think you are too late. But if the share starts to consolidate above $38.81, I can assume that the momentum to the top can continue again and that the share can maybe rise for $42.01 and that high of $46.90 again. The technology shares across the U.S. have had massive rallies, so I'll be very careful to enter at these levels if you've already, um, if you haven't got the stock already. Stephen wanted us to look at British American Tobacco. I mean, there was a, a possible head and shoulder formation on the daily, and on the weekly graph, we can clearly see lower highs on the candles and long upper shadows, which implies there are traders who are taking profit in the bounces. 
And now the big test is, will the share be able to change these levels around 708 Rand 15 into a support already? Now, I've got a strong divergence here, Stephen. I've got a little bit of a bounce. It pulled back, uh, up a little bit and it retraced. And that tells me, even on my stochastic indicator, there was lower highs. And that is seen as negative for British American tobacco. Now, the big test, is obviously, that red line, the 40-week moving average. That is a critical level that needs to remain in, in a, remain a support in order for us to remain positive about the share for the long term. Now, if I take, in, if I want to believe that the share can maybe reach for higher levels and all the bans on cigarettes will be wiped off the table and things will go back to normal, normal, there might be also a possible descending, a descending channel which might become a bullish flag formation, but that will only happen uh, when this upper band changes into a support, and that is waiting at 693 Rand 38. Should British American tobacco start to bounce from here and change that level into a support, I can assume that it might be a continuation pattern. Why? Because the share bounced, made a small pullback, took a little bit of a breather, and if it changes this upper band into a support again, the continuation pattern, the, which will change, a, which will confirm a bullish black, will, will imply that we can see higher levels on British American tobacco. I would only buy it above that level, that 689 level. Below these levels, I will be concerned, and I would co assume that the descending channel may be continued to higher levels. And then the big test is that 40-week moving average. What does the share do when it gets there? Because in the past, we could say it, it kept it a support. It kept it a support. Um, and it just continued to bounce from those levels. So hopefully, that will give you an opportunity to get into the share if you don't own it already. Feel free to send us emails or Twitter requests for next week's show. Have a fabulous week. Take care.